would like to call the Lane County Board of Commissioners regular session back to order for Tuesday, December 1st, 2015. And the first item of business for the afternoon is item 12B. And that is the first reading and setting the second reading and public hearing on ordinance number 1508 in the matter of amending Lane Code chapters 10 and 16 to add provisions for the regulation of recreational marijuana and declaring an emergency. And I believe we have Mr. Rust. Good afternoon, commissioners. Thank you. For the record, Mark Rust with Lane County Planning Department. Um, we've had some discussion about the first reading today, so I thought it would be appropriate to just capture a few highlights from your memo that's in front of you. You do have a recommendation from the Lane County Planning Commission for approval of the proposed changes. Their recommendation did ask for some clarification. So in your packet today, there's a attachment one that's a summary of the proposed changes that also has some track changes shown. Those track changes are what we changed since the Planning Commission reviewed those changes. So those are in response to some of their concerns. Um, also included in their recommendation was a request to revisit this topic in six months or next June, and then also in a year with the anticipation that there will be changes either at the state level or just in the industry in general that may warrant revisiting language. The one issue that's um, been discussed most recently that um, at least a couple of commissioners have expressed concern with is in respect to the marijuana processing use being allowed in the F2 zone and or potentially the F1 and F2 zone. We did discuss this with the Planning Commission specifically, um, and there's some potential concerns around whether or not state law authorizes us to allow that processing use or how we allow that processing use in the forest zone. But um, I'll just leave it at that, and if there's questions from the board, we can talk more about any of the other issues. So. Commissioner Farr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, Mr. Russ, thank you for bringing up the, uh, the F2 zoning issue. And um, what uh, I'd like to suggest and ask you for a little bit of your input on, on the process and procedure for doing this is that uh, we insert language uh, that allows to support allowing the uh, marijuana processing use in F2 with a special use permit providing a dwelling is present on the property. And uh, do you have a, a recommendation to where to insert that? I do. And where we would insert that language would be in Chapter 16, Section 211, Subsection 2Q, and then I think your language um, that the use would be marijuana processing, um, providing a dwelling is present. That section is um, then subject to the special use permit provisions, as you suggest. So Excellent. There actually is... Um, as you, most of you know or I'm, I'm sure are aware, we've been moving very quickly with this language. There is a, a typo in the proposed language that's in front of you today that should probably be clarified for the first reading anyway. And I can mention that in a minute, but just to address your question specifically, Commissioner Farr, that in discussing this idea, your idea and the proposed language as part of the process, it is appropriate to add this your proposed language, read it into this um, first reading, then it can be considered as part of the public hearing and second reading. Excellent. And should conditions arise or we become aware of conditions that make that an illegal addition or uh, inappropriate, not inappropriate, but an illegal addition, then we could uh, address that at the second reading and, and uh, delete it should we need to delete it and still continue with the second reading. Are 
respond to the question not quite asked. Uh, but Thank you. <laughs> reading the body language, I, I, I believe that's right, Commissioner, uh, uh, Chair and Commissioners. Um, as long as we're deleting what's there, we don't need to go out to do another reading based on the new language. If we're adding something new, uh, we would have to. Um, it, there, you know, it, it, we'll get into this, I suppose, next time in, in two weeks. Um, but there's, to the extent that still debate about whether it's a use that's allowed in, in the F2 zone, um, that obviously opens up avenues of appeal that, that may or may not be there anyway. So you'll have some risk uh, if you okay. want to add that language and keep it in. We have risk over the course of the next two weeks? No, no, no. no subsequent uh, to passing the ordinance. Oh, yeah, fine so <laughs> if we were to read this in verbatim, as you just stated in uh, Chapter 16, Section 72Q, um, then uh, at, at the second reading two weeks from today, uh, should we pass the second reading for two weeks from today, we could delete it without any, uh, any danger of not being able to pass the ordinance on that date. That's my read of it, yes. Excellent. Well, Mr. Chair, the, uh, adding this, um, you know, I, I believe that uh, it supports um, our strategic plan in a number of different ways, um, and I won't go into too much detail about that as far as it being a small business, as far as it supporting the transportation uh, goals that we have. Uh, but uh, I'd like to ask uh, that the board consider placing that language in Section 16.7.2Q as just read by Mr. Mr. Rust. And if I could just clarify, it was 16.211 sub 2Q. 2.11 sub 2Q. Okay, so 16.211 sub Q2. So do I need to make a motion to that effect? Or uh, well, can we just add it by uh, consensus? The end of today's process, which is the first reading, uh, would be a motion to approve the first reading and move the second reading. And, and with that motion, I think you would include with this additional language Very good. read verbatim. So help me just one more. I, there's nothing else I need to say now until we get to the end of the discussion. Okay, good. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> sure. Mr. Chair, uh, I just wanted to state that I would support um, the inclusion of that item into the uh, first reading. Um, you know, as we heard from testimony today, there are folks that are actually out there processing and, and legally established at this present time. There is the possibility, I did have a conversation over our AOC conference, that there is a real possibility that OLCC may try to bring these, you know, medical and recreational marijuana uh, into the same, I guess, under the same rules or uh, same process. So it seems to me like um, this would lay the groundwork if it's supported through the process to, to keep it in there and allow folks that are lawfully established today to continue to, to operate. So I'm going to weigh in on this. I, I don't support messing with the language at this point. Um, for the main reason, we have to pass this as an emergency ordinance just to get it effective before recreational marijuana goes legal on January 1st and becomes the, the, the Wild West if we don't do any time, place, and manner. My <coughs> My concern is, one, we haven't really had a, a significant discussion of, of the impact F2, why F2 is different from F1. You know, that's impacted forest land, generally has much more residential in it. One of the things we were striving to do was to separate recreational marijuana growing and processing from residences. And, and, and that's where I, as a rural commissioner, get a majority of my complaints about grow operations, which are legal now. and this operation would remain legal if it stays a medical operation. So it's not like we're going to make anything illegal by continuing on with the language we have, which has been through the Planning Commission. Um, if we don't make last minute adjustments to it, there's not any question about whether we're, you know, circumventing the Planning Commission and public process. I I'm, I'm more inclined to try and stick with what we have and to deal with this in January or February if it looks like we've made a mistake and we want to add in a, a conditional use permit for F2 for recreational processing in, in, in the F2 zone. And at that time, there'll be enough time to research and understand what we're doing legally. We are not making anything illegal by, by not adding a conditional use permit to F2 for processing. 
what we are doing is kind of confusing things a little bit as to you know what exactly are we reading today we decided to delete stuff next week or yeah or two weeks yeah we are under a, a very specific time deadline to where we have to approve this ordinance on the 15th which is our last meeting full board meeting of the year so uh, it's not a process I want to mess with I think like the tobacco ordinance we can revisit it and we can fix mistakes I'm not really ready to revisit a specific piece of a specific zone during a first reading when I know I've only got if, if this was where I could say fine we'll have three or four more readings and we've got time to do it like we should have done with the tobacco ordinance in the first place um, that's fine but this is really this more than you know the the tobacco ordinance didn't have a time constraint this has a very specific time constraint and I would like to just not muck up the process by trying to verbally read language in we haven't really vetted the legal the legalities of and then try to pull it out next week if we decide we don't like it I just assume read it, it you know do the first reading on exactly what's been published posted and and get the second reading and public hearing done if we choose to adopt all the time place and manner we're in on under the time constraints that have been set forth in, in Senate bill I mean House bill 3400 and we're fine we can always loosen regulation later we can't tighten it after January 1st and what you're doing is is possibly making it so we don't have any which means then we can do everything in our RR zone if you remember that matrix that was presented to us at the beginning of this process when we started this which basically was flipped to how we wanted to actually regulate recreational marijuana where almost anything was allowed in RR which is where we're getting all our complaints about medical right now and nothing was allowed in RI you know where we've got some unused rural industrial properties you know so it just I think we're, I think we're begging for a problem if we if we try and solve something on the fly. So, is there somebody that wishes to make a motion about the first reading? But do, you, do you have a comment on that? And I I just want to be clear that in order to um, accurately reflect what the Planning Commission did hold their hearing on that would also be consistent with the table that is laid out that, and like I mentioned um, a few minutes ago there is a typo that I could provide the language to just make sure that's clear that that's what we're considering as the first reading but right. before somebody makes a motion we'll make sure we understand that typo thank you any other questions or comments there somebody that would like to make a motion they want to read the, the change in or they want to make it without the change either way well so Commissioner Stewart because I don't have the language that uh, Mr. Sure Barr had I will move the first reading and set the second reading for ordinance number 15 type Pass 08 in the matter of amending lane code chapters 10 and 16 to add provisions for regulation and recreational marijuana and declaring an emergency setting the second reading and public hearing for December the 15th at 1 30 in Harris Hall um, with the correction of the um, typo which is um, lane code section 16 to 11 to Q being eliminated and um, in chapter 16 to 12 subsection 3 adding a subsection D D that includes the language marijuana processing subject to lane code 16.420 Second. So did everybody get that? Commissioner Farr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to amend the motion to uh, uh, add into uh, 16 211 2Q the language. Mr. Russ, could you recite the language for me, please? 
um, you would add the language marijuana processing um, with a special use permit provided a dwelling is present. And that implies uh, F2 zoning. That's that is um, in 16 to 11. Perfect. Correct, that is F2 zoning. So that is my motion to amend. And I'll second that. So there's a motion to amend that's been moved and seconded. Discussion to the amendment. Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Aye. So the amendment passes 3 2. So then we're on the main motion as amended. Any discussion to the main motion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor of the main motion as amended to add 16211 2Q uh, language around uh, processing an F2 zone, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Motion passes 3 2. So we'll see you guys. Oh, and that was two weeks, right? We have uh, the second December meeting, 130 times certain. Correct. Yep, for the public hearing. In the meantime, Thank our you. office will work uh, plan management to get the corrected language and then that additional language added to what's online, so it's available for the public to see. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll move back to item 12. A. Okay. Which, well, actually, I, I'm going to, Kira, if you don't mind waiting for just a minute, I know that Mr. Dingle got bumped from this morning and needs to get on with some other issues, and I'd like to get back to his, his item because I think it's only going to take about five or five or ten minutes. And I need to stop. Okay, Mr. Dingle, I think we're county, county council announcements, and then you have an item right after that. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Bozovich and members of the board. The first item that I would like to discuss by way of an announcement is a summary of um, a request you made for a work session regarding TRT. And all sorts of issues I won't go into, the collection of the tax, the, the places, the residence, it applies to all those sorts of things. We sat down and met with um, representatives from the city of Eugene because, as you'll recall, they're the administrator of our program, collect the tax, those sorts of things. We discussed uh, a number of different issues, and what we discovered was that there's going to be a significant push. As you can imagine, this is an issue that is not unique to Lane County. It's unique across the state, and there's going to be a push in the, two, in the next legislative section in, session in 2016 to address these issues. And so we're, we're going to participate in that process. We, we, uh, we're in thinking about drafting an ordinance, uh, a model ordinance that could be adopted by other cities in the county that would address all of each of the different issues. But we, when we looked at the, how quickly the session was coming upon, it did not seem like it was a good, made a lot of sense for us to go through and adopt a process that could easily be changed and preempted by uh, the legislature because it seems to me that any uh, legislation in this area is going to be preempted by the state legislature because they want it to be uniform. So I just wanted to bring you up to date on that, and that's what's going on. I'll keep you posted uh, on developments, regular developments, as they uh, occur during that process. Uh, unless anyone has a specific question, that would end my report on the TRT work group. Okay. And then the next item is a first reading and setting a second reading and public hearing on Ordinance 1507, the one that uh, uh, amends uh, Chapter uh, 6 of the Lane Code. Uh, I did I did want to mention that this, um, as you know, we're in the process, and you'll, you'll be seeing on a regular basis uh, these things, uh, different things coming in front of you because the board, I know, long ago, uh, wanted and I've made it a priority to go through. We're working through all three of the documents that uh, govern, if you will, uh, the way we do business in Lane County and we're doing a comprehensive review and we're trying to work these things together. So we're making changes to the Administrative Procedures Manual, the Lane Code, and the Lane Manual, and obviously the latter two uh, involve you. Um, I think the board memo, memo sets this out pretty well. This is one of those things where I think it, it is 
codifying what has been the practice for a long time because there's been uh, different times where folks have requested to see that. Obviously, the board cannot respond to every single situation in a in an immediate fashion involving the need to do something with our property. This fits in line with um, uh, the, uh, you'll recall the, some of the issues we had surrounding um, the use of county resources and property as part of the emergency declaration. This is sort of the, sort of to bring that in line with that as well. That's why it is the board and or the uh, county administrator and gives the county administrator the authority and the ability to delegate that authority as the situation arises. That's all I have unless you have a specific question. Any questions for council? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Sorensen. Uh, thank you. I was interested in the um, title of this ordinance and I was trying to think of something in the lane charter that requires us to have these really long board orders and, and ordinance names, and this one was remarkably short. Um, could you refresh our recollection on the uh, titling of these things? Because this doesn't, one of the purposes of a, of a first reading is to give notice to the public of what it is we're doing. And if we say, well, we're amending uh, ordinance number da da da, it would require, and I know you happen to know that ordinance, Mr. Dingle, just off the top of your head, but not everybody does. And so what do you think about uh, the title of this ordinance? Well, I, does it um, conform to our... I, th I think it does, and the purpose is met with, because you'll notice in the uh, uh, material uh, that is... Uh, as part of the board order, it lists all of the things there. And to be honest with you, Commissioner Swanson, given the kind of um, the, the change here, I, I thought putting the title offenses was a little it was it's a little bit misleading. To be honest, it doesn't. Yeah, if we said in the matter of offenses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and well, and then you'd look at the title of this, and you'd go, or you'd look at the body of the change, and you might think, what does that have to do with it? Um, so, uh, and quite frankly, um, if it's with, I thought when, since we were attaching all the other things, folks could see exactly where it went within it. I mean, and you can see this is a pretty, uh, good grief, this runs the, 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 this chapter is kind of a uh, hodgepodge. It runs the gamut from public property to nudity to the improper use of the telephone system, taking of whales, dolphins, and porpoises. I mean, it's... <laughs> I don't know how I could actually actually summarize very accurately what, what everything is that's in there. So, Does the uh, title, well, maybe I could ask, answer this for me. What does this ordinance deal with? What does it deal with? Yeah. This, that's normally what the title. Right. This mm -hmm. deals with the, this deals with, um, uh, the the um, authority, it actually codifies what I think has always been there. It codifies the authority and, and creates in a, in a place um, within the code that, quite frankly, is the, was the most logical place given what it was, that the board and the administrator and individuals that those two bodies delegate authority to have control over county property and have the ability to control county property. That would make a great title for this ordinance. <laughs> uh, I, mean, if, I mean, I suppose it could be amended to read in the matter of amending Lane Code Chapter 6, offenses, public property, adding Section 6.025, the definition of duly authorized officer. And it's kind of a mouthful, but I, if, if the board's more comfortable doing that, we could certainly do that. But you did say so, the way it's been presented is, is okay. Yeah. Okay. And again, I think the purpose is met because everything is right there for folks to see in terms of where it is falls within the entire chapter. Yeah. As, as I'm reading Section 17 of the Charter under Ordinances, um, it doesn't specifically state it, the title, but just says it has to be, if it's read in title, it just mostly talks about if you add anything that was not referred to in the title, then you have to have a subsequent additional reading. 
So that, which is one of the concerns we were just discussing. Um, <laughs> but it sounds like the title, as referenced under 8B, um, in the in the matter of amending lane code, chapter six, and declaring an emergency doesn't really you know, does include delegation of a person of authority for public property under offenses in chapter, in chapter six of Lane Code. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Yeah. Um, are you okay with that now, Commissioner Sorensen? Any other questions or comments? Do I have a motion? Commissioner Stewart. Mr. Chair, I'd move the first reading and set the sec second reading in public hearing for Ordinance 15-07 on the matter of amending Lane Code Chapter 6 and declaring an emergency, citing the second reading in public hearing for December 15th. I'm, I'm 30 Harris Hall. I'm hoping that Ms. Jones will correct us if it's something other than 130 at Harris Hall. That's when, we, that's when you set the uh, other one, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, to follow the other one. That's, that's fine. And I'm sure Ms. Jones will correct us if that's not fine. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion to the motion? <coughs> Mr. Sorensen. Are, are there any substantive changes in this ordinance? In other words, are there any substantive changes or is this enacting the current policy? This is, in my opinion, this codifies what has been the existing rule and the existing practice. It just provides there's now a place where someone can point to if someone, uh, for example, um, uh, the public works is, is, or is asking someone to you know, step out of the road or do what, and someone says, what's your authority to do that? In the past, they've said it's my authority because we've been doing it and the board can't do it. Now they can actually point to this and say, because I'm a duly authorized officer, because I've been delegated that authority. This would apply to public, county public property, such as roads, the fairgrounds, parks, the... Uh, or courthouse, TSP. square, TSP. the buildings, uh, to, to uh, clarify that, that what certain county employees have authority to. That's actually a really good, the example you brought up is really good, is, is one of the, one of the um, in going through and dealing with some of these um, uh, scenarios and emergency situations, that was one question that came up. So someone is, is being disruptive in the public service building. And so someone comes up and says this person's being disruptive. Let's say that they're not, their conduct isn't criminal. And, and someone, to someone tells them, okay, would you please quit cursing and yelling at the you know, person behind the desk? If you don't, I'll have you removed. And the person says, well, I'm not gonna stop yelling and cursing. Well, who has the authority? And then, and then a city of Eugene or some other police officer comes up and says, who's the person in charge with authority to say that this person has to be removed? Right. So that's all this does is to, that's the, exactly the kind of emergent situations where somebody might say that, that the, only, the only body that has that authority is the Board of Commissioners. Well, obviously it's not practical for us to convene the Board of Commissioners to have a, an unruly or um, disruptive person removed. So that's a good example. Okay. The other ones I think have just been, everyone's assumed that it's been okay, so. Any other discussion to the motion? <clears throat> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Now, Mr. Miller. <laughs> and you're gonna note that it was four to zero with yeah. Commissioner, Commissioner Farr. Far absent. So item 12A, so get my paper back. Thank you, Chair. You're welcome. And this is in a matter of annexing territory to the Lowell Rural Fire Protection District to provide fire protection service to the annexed territory. Assessors map 1915-1600, tax lots 1100 and 120101. Um, and this is order 1512-0105. Uh, Mr. Miller. 
Thank you, Chair Bozovich, and good afternoon, Commissioners. I hope that title had enough specificity for you. Um, the item before you is a request for the annexation of territory into the Lowell, for, uh, Lowell Rural Fire Protection District. The property in question it consists of two tax lots, approximately six acres in size. It's located on Winberry Creek Road, south of Fall Creek Reservoir. Um, pursuant to ORS 198-857, the board has authority to uh, review requests for special districts. Legal notice for this request was published in the Register Guard on November 18th and again on November 25th. And uh, legal notice was posted on the door of this building consistent with state law. Uh, approval of this request will enable um, structural fire protection to be um, provided to the subject property, which does include a single family residence. Uh, the applicant, Paul Galetta, has received um, approval in the form of a board order number 2005-10 from the Lowell for Rural Fire Protection District approving the request for annexation into the district. Uh, staff has reviewed the application and finds that it's straightforward and non-controversial, and we are uh, recommending the board approve this request. That concludes my remarks. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Seeing none, um, we have to hold a public hearing. Unfortunately, this process requires a public hearing, yeah, but I, I don't believe anybody's uh, signed up to speak today. So uh, before I hold the public hearing, I'll just ask the board if there's been any ex party contacts or abstentions due to conflicts of interest or ex party contacts or biases. No one has any ex party contacts or abstentions due to conflicts. So um, we've already heard the staff report. And I will open the public hearing and ask if there's anyone that wishes to speak on this item because no one's signed up. Seeing and hearing none, I will close the public hearing. And we've done that part. <laughs> um, so now we're to uh, Mr. Stewart. Mr. Chair, I'd move approval of Order 15-12-01-5 in the matter of annexing territory to the Lowell Rural Fire Protection District to provide fire protection service to the annexed territory. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion to the motion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes 4-0 with Commissioner Farr absent. Thank you. Thank you. So that will move us to, did we skip anything else this morning? Oh, yes, Commissioner's business. Any announcements from the board? Mr. Lichen. So I just uh, just received this, and uh, this is really good news. So I'll just read it real quickly. So this afternoon, the conference committee tasked with reconciling the differences between the House and Senate transportation bills filed the conference report for the Fixing America Surface Transportation Act, so also called FAST Act. And after much debate about funding, pay-fors, and spending levels, the agreement ultimately reflects the preference for a fully funded five-year bill at a greater overall level of investment. And uh, so the idea is that the House plans on voting on this on Thursday. The Senate then will take action on Friday to get it to the President's desk before December 4th, which is when uh, MAP 21 expires. And so I think there's good news that it looks like we're going to get a transportation package, a five-year package out of, out of Congress. Uh, so um, I just want to say thank you very much. Obviously, Congressman DeFazio was a big, big player in this, along with Senator Wyden. They were both members of the uh, the conference committee, and so hats off to both of uh, Senator Wyden and Congressman DeFazio on this one. So I think this is good news for not only local governments, but I think throughout the country. So glad to see that Congress is working together on a uh, on on a uh, pretty significant bill. Thank you. Any other announcements from the board? I'd just like to um, let folks know that uh, we have a tour tomorrow of the Eugene Mission as a board, and I'm unfortunately going to have to be absent for the tour. I'm going to have to take my father-in-law up to the Portland airport so he can return back to Delaware for a funeral. Um, was unscheduled, but uh, necessary for me to do. So I apologize for my absence on the tour tomorrow morning. Say hi to Marshall in the kitchen for me. <laughs> All right. yeah. 
big dude with beard. You'll know him when you see him. <laughs> um, there are no further announcements. Any agenda team requests? Commissioner Stewart. <coughs> Mr. Chair, <coughs> I'd like to ask if there's support to have the um, uh, land management uh, bring back an update on our long range um, work plan. Um, just to get an idea as to see what's um, been accomplished and what's ahead for the remainder of this year. There's been some topics that um, might want to get an update on, one around to events out in the rural areas, the wedding events and, and that type of structure. So it would be nice to get an update from land management as to how they're doing with their long-range plan and what it looks like for the rest of the year and if there's um, give us a chance too to throw some more items out there for creation of the next long range plan. So there's some, hopefully there's support to do that. I would support it and I thank you Commissioner Stewart for bringing that up because if you weren't going to I was going to. So I appreciate that very much. I think that that's significant. Uh, I've actually been getting uh, more emails again from that type of those type of e event operations wedding events that type of thing and especially in the rural part of of lane county so i, I think that's a great idea thank you and, and i'll give a third head nod to add that to our future agenda items i think it's an, an important update they had quite a, a list to try and work through It'd be kind of nice to know where they are rather than just once a year get you know hear what they didn't get done and what's going to be rolled to the next year so any other agenda team requests or work session requests? And uh, is there any other business for the board? If not, then we'll do a uh, review of assignments. Oh, sorry. So I was just going to do a review of okay. assignments. I wasn't sure if we, if we were still coming back there. Uh, the only item I had was the follow-up uh, with Mr. Magnuson uh, from his public comment this morning. I did talk to our land management division manager, Lydia McKinney, and uh, we'll follow up with the assessor's office and county council and uh, provide a response and then a report back to the board. Thank you. I appreciate that. He's uh, had a long history of conflicts with, with the county, so it's, I don't want to add to those. <laughs> Um, so, uh, if there's no other business for the board today, uh, we'll get we'll uh, going to recess into executive session. I don't believe there's reason for us to come out of executive session today to make a decision. Um, so uh, we'll probably um, adjourn out of executive session. Um, tomorrow is not a board meeting; it's just a tour, and um, so we'll be back uh, next Tuesday for a regular board meeting. So the Board of Commissioners will meet in executive session to consult with Council concerning the legal rights and duties of a public body with, with regard to current litigation or litigation likely to be filed. This executive session is held pursuant to ORS 1926602H, which allows the Board of Commissioners to meet in executive session for the purposes listed above. Representatives Representatives of the news media and designated staff shall be allowed to attend the executive session. All other members of the audience are asked to leave the room. Representatives of the news media are specifically directed not to report any of the deliberations during the executive session except to state the general subject of the executive session as previously announced. No decisions may be made in executive session, and we are going to reconvene in the Board of Commissioners Conference Room. We are recessed. Thank <clears throat> you.